The recruiting process actually has already started, whether you realize it or not. Whether you're being recruited or not is going to be based on your ability versus your age. Regardless of what age you're at, you have an ability level. If you're a freshman in high school and you're, let's say, an average player, you're probably not going to have a lot of interest from the college coaches right now because you're so far away in a year's, uh, from a year's standpoint. If you're a freshman that's off the charts, that's throwing 75 miles an hour, then yeah, you are going to be recruited. With that being said, if you're a sophomore and you're, or a junior and you haven't been recruited or contacted by any schools, now's probably the time to take the initiative on your own, go somewhere where you can get your metrics, find out how hard you throw the ball, how fast you run, any metrics that those college coaches are going to want, and then you're going to want to make a player profile for yourself. It's going to have your name, it's going to have your position, it's going to have all your biographical data for softball, and it's going to have your academic data, and you're going to want all your... Um, all your metrics there and you can upload any video there and that's what you're going to take when you contact the college coaches you're going to link, send them a link to your profile when they look at it they will have everything they need to make an evaluation one thing i hear from a lot of college coaches is they get incomplete information and don't forget that college coach may be emailed two to three hundred times per day from players they're not going to have the time to go dig around and find video on you that may or may not exist or find your academic info Make it easy for that coach. Put everything possible. There's no such thing as too much information in a profile. If they don't need it, they won't use it. And the last thing I'll say is you constantly have to update that profile. If you're a senior, if the last video is from sophomore year, that's not good. So you have to update that profile as your academics change, as your metrics change, as your video changes. That needs to be updated. I personally don't think so. There are, there are a ton of studies online that you can find about multi-sport athletes. I know with girls, especially the softball players that are the, the premium softball players, let's say, a lot of them are premium because they're premium athletes. So they're going to be wanted by the soccer coach. They're going to be wanted by the basketball coach. They're going to be wanted by the field hockey coach. That doesn't bother me because if you have the skill set through your natural athleticism, if you can run, if you can jump, if you're athletic, if you have strength, if you have functional strength, then you may want to tweak your, your, your hitting technique or your pitching technique or your fielding technique, but that I would not give up an entire season of playing another sport that's going to build on your strength, going to build on your athleticism. I would rather take the time that I have to work on my uh, anything that really needs improvement in my softball game, but I would not be taking an entire season off because I don't think you'll get that much improvement. I don't think you'll fix a swing that much or fix a, a delivery that much in pitching um, over a two or three month period. I think it's best to stay athletic. It's best to stay with the strength and conditioning and then apply that to softball if in the end softball becomes your best sport or your final sport that you play in college. If you enjoyed the video, please let us know by leaving a like. If you have a question you like answered, please leave it below in the comment section. If you want to catch more of this content, make sure you follow or subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. Thank you. See you next week.